evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small medium sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist and a research engineer in telecommunications. Uh, tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the uh, issue of whether uh, uh, the Russian hack that has been alleged, which is not substantiated, I've read recent material that still indicates that we can't uh, trace the action. I can't trace it. Maybe you can. Uh, I'm still looking. And uh, the question, first of all, is <clears throat> it's normal for all of the intelligence agencies to try to collect as much information as they can. That is a given. There's already a collect it all mentality in our own NSA. So it's understood that it's a job of intelligence agencies to try to collect other uh, countries, power structures, data. But there's a, it's a cat and mouse game. First of all, you don't want to get caught. As long as you don't get caught, um, a lot of projects are going to be authorized, <clears throat> but uh, if you do get caught, it can be treated as a sort of warlike act. But the question then you have to turn is, who benefits? And the actual fact is that <clears throat> I benefit and you benefit because we do not have a transparent government. And what's been revealed in the uh, WikiLeaks mails uh, I do not think is particularly unflattering of Podesta. Uh, now, the operations going on might be unethical or corrupt or not, or just routine politics. I, I'm, I'm not making a judgment on that right now. Uh, but the operations that are going on are not good. Um, uh, but it's not that much different than what she's already disclosed herself through the uh, Judicial Watch suits, unfortunately for her. Uh, her, she had to dis divulge all of this, and that makes it very interesting because why shouldn't these DNC records uh, be uh, also subject to some kind of scrutiny? Um, since the DNC is so powerful in this election, it's functioning like a government unto itself. And I'm not saying that, uh, <clears throat> uh, and, and, uh, uh, and of course the Republican Party tries to do the same thing and often does. Um, so we are the winners in this. We're getting more transparency. And these people have the sense not to disclose too many crimes in their emails, just as everyone does. Nobody is going to uh, uh, say their darkest intent in a written format. So these emails just confirm things we already suspected. Uh, there are some problematic things like this issue. Uh, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to get into every single detail, but we knew that the uh, Saudis and the Gulf states are arming Mujahideen, Sunni, Salafist uh, uh, terrorists in, in some people's book. And, uh, and certainly uh, there's a lot of criminal elements in the ISIS organization, um, which is, was caused by our uh, abandonment of the Iraqi army uh, after we invaded and destroyed Iraq. <clears throat> um, so I don't really see what the big deal is about whether Russia leaked it or not, uh, because it serves our interests. So certainly anyone in the media who's telling you you shouldn't read them because Russia leaked them has really got their head up their ass, uh, if you'll for for forgive my saying so, because um, that is the most absurd thing possible to ignore information uh, that benefits you to know, to have a deeper understanding. And it's just complementary to what we've already had disclosed. So what is what is the range, um, the tonal difference of what we saw in the Secretary of State mail and this mail? I mean, I uh, we saw warnings from her advisors that Libya had been infiltrated by extremists at the very end. And, and uh, remember, this is in writing. So it's one level worse when they're talking. This is what they're willing to put into the historical record. So if they were committing crimes, they wouldn't put them in emails. They might have to show. Uh, uh, now, and I don't want to be unfairly harsh to Clinton about this issue about committing crimes. Uh, these, uh, since really for me, I mean, Nixon, Kissinger, 
uh, Alan Dulles, ever since the Cold War, uh, with the creation of the CIA and the national permanent national security state, you know, um, we have had what uh, some would call uh, realpolitik and other would call war crimes. Clearly what Henry Kissinger did all over Southeast Asia were uh, war crimes uh, uh, and all over the world. It's, it, it's, it's horrendous, uh, his uh, lack of remorse for, uh, and he said, we do not engage in missionary activity uh, in the U.S. foreign policy. Um, and he viewed U.S. foreign policy through a spook lens. And so what these guys, they view this as a risk game. You know, and with Libya, uh, there was only one army on the risk board in Libya. So we took a duck, we took a, a victim there easily and cheaply. Uh, and we broke our word and we left the country discarded uh, like a used condom after plundering uh, its sovereign wealth fund and uh uh, from the perspective of the people of Libya, they've lost hundreds of billions of dollars, and and there's a, a, a infinite, incalculable damage to Libya. You, if you, if you actually found the U.S. guilty of a war of aggression in Libya, you, we would not have enough money to pay the fine. If you consider uh, here, you might get a settlement for a, a rape of a uh, ten million dollars. That would be in. Uh, what's gone on in Libya since then with the property damage, if you, it's incalculable. War is impossible to repay the cost of. And, and that's basically my own primary interest in politics is, is largely ending war. And what Americans and Westerners don't seem to realize is we are virtually the only people practicing warfare anymore. Um, <clears throat> Afghanistan was started by the U.S. prior to the U.S. arming the Mujahideen. Uh, Afghanistan was uh, not a lawless state and women could go to school. It was a, it was a dictatorship, it was a communist dictatorship, but the life under uh, is uh, incalculably worse uh, since they fell. Uh, and um, and uh, and and since World War II, uh, since uh, Vietnam, I mean, there, we are pretty much the only ones actually launching straight out invasions, uh, uh, and we should end the practice of war. So I supported Ron Paul in 2012 because he was the only, and ultimately Gary Johnson, uh, because he was the only anti-war candidate. Uh, and war it, we, is a is an inhuman and obsolete function, and um, the people that are backing Hillary Clinton are eagerly. Uh, uh, if you've watched the intelligence people, the generals, and the type of people she associates with this particular group, I really do see the world. We would see it as uh, as a risk game, but I'm sure they have very impressive situation rooms that show every. Uh, one of our key performance indicators, and our key performance indicators are to have countries with governments friendly to us and friendly to foreign corporate investment. If you're a small, weak country and you're friendly to us and friendly to foreign corporate investment, uh, and you have a, a limited bargaining power in your currency, your country will basically be bought up. Uh, the McDonald uh, now in some countries they're lucky enough that the plutocracy is largely locally owned, uh, like uh, in Chile where my wife is from. Uh, it's you know the president was the richest man in the country, uh, uh, the owner of uh, Lan Chile, Lan, and uh, uh, and there's a lot of very wealthy people who are Chilean directly at least, but. Uh, but they want the, each country to be pulled into our sphere of influence. Um, and uh, uh, and this is a, uh, so each country has indicators and some of them are in the West completely and some of them um, are producing certain barriers. Some of them are targeted for having their governments uh, disinformed against the support a, a side we would want. Some of them are planned for actual direct aggression like uh, Syria. Uh, and, you know, I have friends who, you know, uh, a few friends that are deluded enough to think that uh, the situation in Syria is uh, one wherein uh, we should destroy the Syrian government uh, through foreign military intervention. And uh, the stats in Syria, uh, 
one in every three young men that is Shia in Syria, the Alawites, the, the sect that the uh, Bashar al-Assad is from, uh, has died. Uh, so when people don't uh, understand this enormous suffering of his particular kin group, which is a not insubstantial uh, uh, number, I mean, I think they're over 20% of the population, or, uh, then uh, the Christians firmly back him. According to Western sources, uh, the, uh, uh, the National Interest, I think, had an article mentioning this. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, and there's a very large Saudi armed army there. Um, they get uh, salaries. Uh, they have, uh, so to have the, the, you imagine a foreign army camped in a country and their salaries entirely paid for by another country. And you say, see, you're having a civil war. That's not a civil war. Um, that is a set of protests manipulated by uh, foreign extremists, um, in my humble opinion. Um, but of course there is uh, uh, opposition elements, uh, substantial than maybe, the, uh, but uh, the idea should be peace, uh, talks, uh, transition, uh, some uh, milestones, uh, healing. <clears throat> and as long as countries like Saudi Arabia and Turkey and the United States are willing to keep fueling conflict into this country. And now, as far as I understand it, there's been an agreement made with the U.S. about Mosul in Iraq. Uh, and um, I'll go back to laying all this out with the articles and the maps. Uh, I've just been really swamped with work lately. Uh, but at any rate, with uh, Mosul and Iraq, they're supposedly understanding to funnel the ISIS leadership into Syria to fight Assad. Uh, which, imagine if you were charged with doing that as an individual, what kind of consequences it would be for you to funnel 9,000 ISIS members into a country. Because the other option would be, as Donald Trump, who I, uh, uh, I'm not uh, endorsing at this moment, uh, uh, but Donald Trump said at the debate, why aren't you targeting their leadership in Mosul? Um, why are you telling them ahead of time? Why don't you do a special op? Well, because they want to use this ISIS apparent. I mean, I, I can't say this for a fact, but I'm concerned that they want to use ISIS as a weapon against Assad. Um, and I completely... I don't see any possible reason why anyone would disagree with um, defending the Syrian uh, government uh, and putting down the civil war militarily. Uh, I mean, if you were in that boat, if, if you were a Christian, if you were an Alawite, if you weren't, uh, 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 if you were a Sunni that, uh, that wasn't ready for the kind of ride, I mean, the problem is you have to be realistic. Uh, You've had your entire country destroyed through uh, all this foreign, you know, there's a foreign army from Turkey there. There's Everybody's got a foreign army there. Uh, then there's the Kurds. Um, so, it, and now we have the uh, U.S. firing into Yemen. Uh, and another thing, my friends, I've seen, uh, seem to think that uh, there's an indication of a TARP relationship, that there's a kickback from the TARP bailout. But I don't, I wouldn't describe that as particularly interesting. The really interesting kickback is the U.S. arms sales to Saudi Arabia under Clinton and the amount of money donated to the Clinton Foundation from the Gulf Petromonarchies. It's basically 0.1%. Um, that is a much more disturbing number to look at. So uh, if you go back and look at this uh, general George Allen or John Allen back at the Democratic Convention, you look at this guy, says, we'll beat you like you've never been beaten before. So then, you know, my friends who support Clinton or whatnot, uh, you know, they think that uh, <clears throat> the Russian government um, uh, let's see, um, well, I was talking about Yemen. It's all so complicated. Sorry. Um, oh, yes. John Allen. Uh, and that gets us over to this new guy says, we'll beat you and beat you soundly. Um, and this is basically the issue of who broke the rules. 
which is where I started and that's where I'll end. So if you look for the Russian, so, so, so we know we're going to gather each other's intel. Um, uh, but leaking it publicly is a whole nother matter. That is a, a quasi-military operation in terms, or it's an escalating, no, it's not that bad. It's an escalating event. But my argument is that this material could be leaked without substantial harm because it doesn't tell us a whole lot more than we already knew from other sources. It's just confirming. There's no... Um, uh, now, if you want to get indignant about it, it confirms that she basically kissed the ass of Wall Street, or she is an incredibly uh, just, just pandering, glib person. I don't know. Maybe I'd end up doing the same thing if I, oh, you got to go talk to Bank of America. Oh, well, you guys are great. Isn't this lovely? You know, uh, be on my side. Uh, uh, but uh the males paint, a, 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 you know, this picture, but the, uh, the, you know, back here on my wall, next to Bernie, is, in the shadows, is a letter signed from Bill Clinton that I sent him a mail at the time of the whole storm, expressing my support. So it's very hard for me to understand the Bill Clinton that I've met uh, and um, the Bill Clinton that... Um, that sent me this letter and the man I hear about on this Jeffrey Epstein plane. This is really something he should take by the horns and address if there's nothing to it. And if there is something to it, he suffered from a severe sexual uh, uh, attack or dysfunction, or maybe it's so, uh, I mean, uh, just, it really is hard to get one's head about, but uh, I I just don't know what to think. Uh, it just really makes me speechless. Uh, I won't throw the first stone, but uh, it really uh, was a personally uh, shocker for me. So if you're not aware, uh, Bill was uh, has flown many times on this Epstein fellow's private jet and who's known to uh, have an interest in underage uh, and very young women uh, and procured them and he was convicted for it. Uh, convic uh, and um, it's in the news, I'm sure you've heard about it. But uh, well, so where we wanted to end uh, was talking about who broke the rules. Um, and the rules from the Russian perspective were broken first by NATO moving to its border. Then uh, from the Russian perspective, the rules were broken in Libya where we promised no regime change, but uh, had Gaddafi killed and the country overrun by rightists uh, that have traditional ties to the enemies of uh, Russia's historic allies. Um, so what does this mean? Syria, Libya, Afghanistan, uh, uh, many of these countries are traditional Russian allies. And um, if Russia is to conf deal the U.S. in Syria, Russia has to basically adopt an asymmetric approach. Uh, and that's what they've basically shown, is that they're going to make it costly in every uh, way, shape, and form. Um, so... Engaging all of this out, it really, it's to deal with the concept of an accidental nuclear war started, the fear that the kind of super aggressive people, I tried to paint a little bit of a picture, you could imagine that they're trying to conquer the world, and it's not really in your interest, it's in their and their friends' interests. Uh, they might, they may rationalize it, saying that they're uh, doing you a favor, and they're helping you, and that when they make a mistake, it's oops, but when there are millions and tens of millions of people uh, killed and hurt and damaged in ways that are unnecessary because of a war industry that Clinton wants to spur forward. This is like the very devil themselves when you paint this picture. Uh, my name is Alexander Hagen. Uh, good night and good luck.